Hi, it's Dave Payne here again with uh, another tutorial on version two of the generalized hyperbolic stretch, the GHS script um, by Mike Cranfield. Um, before I start, I'd like to mention that uh, on the, the ghsastro.co.uk, you'll find uh, this and uh, some other videos by uh, Polyman Astro. I want to shout out uh, thanks to Polyman Astro for making these. Um, it's very interesting to see the tool being used in different ways. And in addition, I think his uh, production quality is a tad better than mine. Uh, in, on that note, I'd like to apologize for the buzzing sound on my first video. Um, if I get a chance, I will re-record it. Um, but I, hopefully I've fixed that now. So without further ado, um, oh, well, I'll just mention that uh, what I'm trying to do in this tutorial is uh, focus on uh, a more complex image to stretch. I'm going to be uh, talking about how I pick my my uh, stretch equation parameters, uh, both for the initial stretch and uh, for subsequent stretches, and how I would go about stretching um, a, a little more difficult image. So without further ado, I'll move over to my uh, PixInsight. For this tutorial, I'm going to be stretching an image of the Pelican and North American Nebulae. Now, one thing about this image is you can see the nebula takes up a good portion of the image frame, and there are various, uh, there's quite a dynamic range of uh, brightness of the, of the nebula involved, in addition to a number of stars, um, fairly bright stars. So this makes um, the image stretch a, a, a little bit more complicated, and I have to think a little bit about what it is that I want to show in my final result. Um, at this stage, it's still linear, although the STF has been applied um, to show what we're looking at. Um, the, but at, at this stage, I've applied all my linear uh, processing steps to the image, like the gradient removal, um, deconvolution. Um, and in particular, I want to mention at the start of my linear processing, um, I'd like to mention something in the script that you likely want to look at if your uh, desire is to show, particularly if your desire is to show dim nebulosity. And that is under noise reduction, there are two scripts to uh, reduce noise, and that's right at the start of your processing, right after you've integrated your images. Please read about this. It's fantastic for, for removing Gaussian noise in, in the background and uh, um, really can uh, work wonders. Um, in this case, uh, I have applied uh, um, median, uh, what is it, uh, multi-median trans transform multi to reduce the, reduce the noise after I had done some deconvolution. So the script we're going to be focusing on is, of course, the generalized hyperbolic stretch equation. So what I'd like to do is open up this image. It's right here. Ask me if I want to remove the STF, and I will. So I just want to focus in on First, the selection of, of the parameters for the initial stretch. As we've seen before, the, most of the histogram is on the far hand, left-hand side of, of the histogram plot. So if I zoom in on that left-hand side, I can see um, where the pixel values, how the pixel values are distributed. One thing to note that this histogram, if you looked at video one, this histogram is much wider um, than, than that histogram, which makes it a just a little bit trickier to, to 
to stretch. So as with the other histograms, uh, I generally want to select a very large B factor um, so that my uh, contrast is highly focused about um, the SP point that I choose. And in a lot of other stretching programs, that SP point can't be changed. It's usually at the black point. Wherever you select the black point, that's where the maximum contrast will be added. But I just want to show with the GHS what would happen if I picked an SP sort of far to the left, not at zero, but far to the left of my histogram peak. What, what would happen there? So I got that value here, it's point triple zero two six. I can put in triple zero two six. And for that, and then begin to stretch the image and I see it shift to the right. Get out of my zoom. And stretch it up. So maybe about there, maybe a little less than there something like that. So what happens if I click and put SP far to the left, I really brighten the background out and I can see a lot of the dim nebulosity there. But I have put a lot of that um, contrast actually to the left of the histogram. So I'm giving a lot of contrast to a place where I don't really have any pixels. So if you like a brighter background and you really want to focus in on that dim neb nebulosity, you can put that SP point um, somewhat to the left of the histogram peak. I would tend to keep it somewhere inside the histogram peak, maybe somewhere about there, um, just so I get a better, a better contrast within the nebulosity itself. Now I just want to go back again and, and look at the opposite effect. Here I'll be zooming in. Let me reset everything. I'll zoom in on the histogram on the left hand side. What if I put my SP somewhere about there and decide to some decide to um, stretch it using that SP. So there we got 0 0.0109. So put 0 0.0109 in there. Set my B up to the right and start stretching again. Get rid of my histogram. So what happens if I stretch a lot in this uh, manner? What I've done is inserted a heck of a lot of contrast because of my high B. I've said, said a lot of contrast um, past the histogram peak, and that's kind of bifurcating my image um, into sort of bright and absolutely dark areas. It's almost binarizing the image. So uh, you really won't want to do that in, in most cases. And if I do select um, my SP somewhere to the right, I would have to back off, particularly on my B factor and my stretch amount before I uh, before I would uh, be able to uh, get something that looks relatively good. Um, however, what I'm sacrificing here is the amount of stretch I can put in that initial stretch so the whole image is a bit darker. So this is, it, it's fine, but it will be creating additional work for me. So the beauty of the GHS, one of the beauties of the GHS is that it's very kind on stars and also at the same time shows a lot of ne dim nebulosity. So the key to getting this is having, in fact, a large B and 
putting that contrast fairly close to the histogram peak. Now, it's not something you have to do every time, but uh, in, in most cases, that's where I start out. So I'll go back to resetting this, zoom in on the histogram on the left-hand side, and let's pick SP as close to this peak. I'm not picking SP with this line that I'm picking. I'm just inquiring of where that peak is. So let's guesstimate that it's at point triple zero five two. I can then try my B all the way to the right, see if we get a better result than the last time. Um, might have a little, no, I can't until I get rid of this, have a little boo of my stars, um, but I'm not finished stretching here. So I am going to pull this up somewhere, maybe about there. That looks good. So the reason why the GHS is so good at, at uh, looking at these stars is I'm not wasting this, uh, this contrast that I'm inserting into the, I'm not into the into the image. I'm not wasting it on essentially background stuff and, and noise. I'm putting it right where my data exists. And I get the maximum out of histogram expansion for the minimum amount of shift to the right. Now just as a just as an aside, that's partly due to the very large B that I can use in, in my equations. That's part of the reason it does this. It concentrates that contrast around the SP point, but it's also partly to do with the SP point itself. Because it's not at zero all the time, um, I can, I can uh, insert even more contrast where it needs to go. And in fact, what Mike has done here is actually allowed for the histogram transformation option, he's actually allowed for um, that contrast, that SP, to be non-zero. So even if you're a fan of using the histogram transformation or arc sign transformation, you can still take advantage of that SP in your stretches. Um, now, I may say, make some fine adjustments, maybe make this 0.48 to see if that helps with the dim nebulosity a little bit. And I think it does, and I'm not bifurcating the, the whole image too much. So I think I'm pretty happy with that. Let's create a new image. And let's just call it uh, um, NAS1 and say stretch that. So basically, that's the determination of my first set of stretch parameters. I haven't really touched the LP and HP in this case. Um, I don't want it to repeat the stretch because that sends my histogram way over to the right. So I'll just reset the parameters there and have a look. So there, there uh, could be a little bit more brightness put in the image. We've certainly been very uh, kind to the stars and we're certainly bringing out a bunch of the dimmer nebulosity in this image, um, which, which I like. But I'm looking at the image itself, and in this area here, um, I'm seeing it's it's rather flat. It's and rather two dimensional, if you if you will. Um, one thing I can do is I can query what the values are up there, and I'm seeing it's 0 0.33, 0 0.32, 0 0.36, something like that. Get out of there, and I'll look on my histogram, and I'll see that there's indeed a peak of pixel values in and around that 0.3 something range. So when I am stretching, I'm looking for these peaks that will arise. And in my subsequent stretches, what I want to do is basically get rid of these peaks. It'll also show up, these peaks will also show up as sort of 
flat areas on the, the logarithmic histogram. I see I've got some stars starting to, to get out here, so I'm going to have to be careful going forward. So I want to check on my histogram. But I want to basically get rid of that peak. On the logarithmic histogram, what I'd like to see is sort of a... Uh, uh, a fairly constant decline. It doesn't have to be absolutely constant, but uh, what I'd like to see is a nice um, sort of monotonic slope going down to the right. So that's what I'm going to deal with in my second, second stretch. So how do I do that? Well, I first want to find out what that point is because I want to add contrast there. So I want to add contrast in the middle of my nebulosity. So I find that value is about 0.32, as I saw from the image query. So I put my SP at 0.32, somewhere around there. And I want fairly focused, not too much. Maybe something like that. And start to stretch. And you can see that peak start to come down. And then it starts to flatten out. And as I'm doing that, you start to see this contrast develop in the nebulosity itself. Now, maybe I want to uh, play around with this. I want to maybe make it here. And now I'm getting a, a much better sort of more uh, uh, single slope sort of decline. So that's all saying good things. Um, but at the same time, I want to note that I have dimmed again because my transform is falling below my uh, y equals x, my identity line. I am dimming the pixels out here. So I can apply a little bit of uh, low light protection to bring that back up to where I had it in the first place because I like that. And I want to check the stars up here. What am I doing to them? I may be starting to, to bunch them up at my brightest stars, so I want to maybe add a little bit of highlight protection to this. So just a, just a hair. Um, so you can see that I'm really adding a lot of contrast here, and I'm kind of taking it away from up in this range. So I'm kind of liking that as my second stretch. Maybe I'll create a, another image here. And, uh, oh, sorry, it's down here. And a underscore S2, maybe. And execute that. I'm really liking this because, because of that contrast. It's really making the, the nebulosity come alive. And maybe I'll give it one, one more go because I reset go back here I can see well it's not too bad I could do some overall brightening here maybe there's a little um, peak back here or maybe I should take care of this middle area a little bit so that's a still at 0.32 we'll see how that works I'm sort of flying as I normally would, just trying things out here. Um, maybe I put a gentle B factor here and stretch this out. You see, I'm putting too much, too focused still. So maybe I go move it down a little bit, that's a little bit better. Maybe a little bit more stretch. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm liking my SP back there. Maybe I want to move it. Uh, that's a better spot. I do have to increase my little protection, though. Bring that back up. And that's pretty good for a second stretch. Um, just, oops, I put on the wrong button. Just check how my stars are doing. They're not too bad. 
and execute this stretch. And I'm pretty much done. I'm liking the dim that I'm seeing. I'm liking the contrast in the nebulosity. Maybe you could argue there's too much contrast in the nebulosity, but it's a matter of taste at this standpoint. It's just going to overwrite that. So one last thing before we exit this image, uh, exit the script here, is uh, what Mike has put in for version two is the ability to, to um, stretch the saturation curve, which is all very nice. So when I'm stretching, I tend to lose a lot of the color. You see the colors kind of trend to each other. They're giving colors, but uh, it's it's not very intense anywhere. So if I go to the saturation stretch, I can you know, make those colors a little more intense. You know, that a bit of be that. And you can see this is a matter of taste again. I can, um, let's say, we'll go there for now. Um, and uh, execute that. It's taking a bit of time now because it must um, deconstruct the image in terms of, of luminance and uh, a and B, which contain the saturation information, stretch that saturation, and then reconstruct the image. So it takes a little bit longer than the standard RGBK. Um, but now we can see there's much uh, bigger uh, difference between the individual color values in my histogram as compared to, to um, before I did that stretch. So I can then exit and again it's asking me to save my log i talked about this in the last video um, i've done this a couple of times preparing for this video so i pretty much uh, know what uh, i've done but uh here we have the, the image as i've stretched using the jhs um, script for comparison um here is the STF alone, and I think if I control this, even if I delink the colors, um, it still doesn't bring the bring the colors out. So you may say, well, something like this. Um, this is actually a, um, an SHO, uh, an HSO image palette, which I just did for simplicity. Um, I might uh, decide to go back and do an HSO um, Hubble palette, uh, an SHO Hubble palette image. Um, but for simplicity, I just I just did a, a HSO to keep uh, sulfur in the in the greens to avoid excessive greens here. Um, just for comparison, I also stretched this um, using the arc sign. process and just for for comparison with the arc sign process i was able to improve on the colors on the stf um, and the arc sign color process I, I like it very much and a lot of people immediately go to the arc sign um, process to boost their colors um, but just as just a uh, my observation is the arc sign isn't process isn't that great at putting the contrast where you want it as it is with the as with the ghs script one thing mike has um, also added which i'm going to demonstrate in the next video is that that process of color enhancement that goes with the arc sign has now been built in by mike into the ghs script so what this means is I can use the GHS script together with the color enhancing 
um, methodology as employed in the art sign process, art shine process, and uh, get the best of both wor worlds. I can put the contrast where I want it and get the color enhancement. So that's for the next video. Um, but for that, uh, I think uh, GHS has done a pretty good job. Um, the stars are not too bad. Um, and with that, I'll end the video. Thank you very much for your attention.